So, uh, let's uh, start with uh, our uh, talk today. This is more about uh, uh, what are the various challenges that we have to face as a developer when we move from one framework to another, specifically Angular in this case. Uh, a quick show of hands, how many of you uh, were working on Angular before? So, I can say how you Oh, it is absolutely relevant. <laughs> so, uh, React did come into a space where there was a lot of trust going into Angular and we were uh, a lot of our business de decision makers, uh, they were thinking about whether to go with Angular or React and uh, we were pushed from being an Angular developer into React and things suddenly changed for us, right? And uh, there were a lot of challenges faced by us and how did we cope into, uh, into it? So hopefully uh, this talk will help uh, a lot of people who are uh, jumping uh, frameworks uh, going further. So uh, this is actually uh, uh, one good uh, uh, thing that I always uh, refer to and this is quite relevant to our situation. Uh, this is by Adios Mani who is one of the Chrome developers. He says, uh, first do it, then do it right and then do it better. Why is it relevant to us? Uh, the thing is, like when I was an Angular developer, my manager asked me that, you know, can you code in React? And I was like, uh, okay, my uh, code is working so fine with Angular, I know Angular so well. Why do you want me to jump into React now? You know, I love to run, learn a whole uh, new stuff again. And there is always that change, uh, uh, it's right? very strange. Like, you know, like, again, uh, uh, bring up a new book and start reading up the whole thing. Uh, and log into YouTube and start watching uh, you know, tutorial videos, it's a big uh, pain actually. So, but then, uh, we as knowledge workers, this is kind of, uh, uh, this is our, uh, our knowledge and uh, this is what we use in our work and uh, like you know, upgrading our knowledge on a continuous basis is a part of the process. So, why I brought this up is, uh, if you can see the green thing, when we say first do it, this is how uh, it was before, plain JavaScript was you know, just get it done, like you know, if you just want to validate pa password, this is the way to do it. Then Angular came with a way saying that you know you do it right. Like you know, we'll give you data uh, uh, data binding and a lot of frameworks around uh, UI development. You do it the right way. And then React came and said that you know you can do it in an even better way than how uh, traditional uh, frameworks are working. So a quick look into uh, how my life has been uh, pre 2012. So uh, I've been associated with the front end development for quite a long time. But till 2010 there was not much of a change, right? Like if you see here. Uh, till 2010, we were actually coding mostly in uh, plain JavaScript. Uh, jQuery actually eased out our things uh, quite a lot, right? Like, uh, till plain JavaScript, it was more about if I enter a password, it will check for whether I have entered uh, letters and numbers, uh, uh, whether I have uh, capital and small letters or not. There was not much of a business logic on the front end side. But then, uh, uh, with jQuery, things became much more easier because now we could query our DOM elements so much uh, more easier. Earlier it was uh, document dot get element by id and like you know, big verbose statements. Even uh, with jQuery, we had Ajax coming in, uh, which was actually a lot of uh, you know, uh, ease for us to make uh, query to our API servers. Then, uh, uh, while we were still on jQuery, there was a lot of demand going on on the user uh, side. Like the user wanted more from the content side. Like they wanted animation, they wanted gradients, they wanted a lot of uh, fluid UI. Uh, this is where HTML uh, was a kind of lagging in because HTML5 was still not there and uh, companies like uh, Microsoft and Adobe they came up with Silverlight and uh, Flash and they came up with the concepts of animation gradients and they came up with patterns like MVVM and that was also when we had uh, data binding introduced by Knockout and uh, Backbone actually came up with a, a big bit uh, you know, talking uh, like trying to modernize our UI uh, uh, code into model uh, view controller which was still now available mostly on the backend side. And then around this 2012 time frame, Angular 1.x uh, uh, like came up in a really big way and it said that okay, whatever pattern you are using, uh, we will actually provide your entire framework to create complex UI applications and that actually went on for a long time. And uh, what really drove me to Angular 1.x at that time? Uh, oh, I think the blue uh, text are not really visible, right? Yeah. Okay, I just read up. Anyways, uh, it's too much to read. <laughs> so, uh, the main thing is uh, the uh, magic of two-way data binding, right? When I say magic, it really was magic because uh, we didn't know what really was happening underneath. Like, we would just use the scope variable and we'll say the scope for uh, dot uh, greetings equal to hello world and it will uh, magically show on my UI. Nobody really cared about, you know, looking at uh, how the things were working. And uh, this was really a big boon for us because now we could concentrate just on the business logic and my UI would keep upgrading itself. And this actually uh, laid the foundation for uh, building a complex UI application because imagine doing all these things with plain uh, JavaScript. Uh, it's not that it's impossible because it was not really a maintainable code. But now we were getting into a more structured UI programming. 
Similarly, it was using HTML templates that we were already used to. <laughs> and applications like this became uh, quite uh, uh, possible. This is a single page application wherein earlier you used to have a, a, a web page with all the links and all. So you click on a, a link, you uh, go to a new URL, your entire page is replaced. But now, instead of having websites, we started having web applications. And uh, this is like one example here, which is more like uh, a spreadsheet style kind of an application. I can just move my mouse around and, and do things on the page, and it just auto updates uh, without refreshing the entire page. And this was a big boost in uh, user uh, experience. Then, uh, uh, as Angular uh, versions progressed in Word.x, they came up with a lot of uh, things and they actually created an ecosystem. It, uh, uh, it was more <coughs> as a framework rather than a library. So, we got support for router, internationalization, accessibility, and then uh, there were a lot of material design concepts and a lot of code libraries you know, supporting that. There was animation, uh, there was uh, uh, bootstrap, uh, gave us a responsiveness, and uh, IO handling was there, lazy loading. There were a lot of browser tools which were available to uh, debug uh, our application because now our application was getting complex uh, in nature, more complicated in nature. So, we wanted uh, better tools to debug it. And then uh, Angular was actually created by the testing team in Google. And that's why testing was kind of a foundation in the framework. And uh, they came up with a really a set of uh, good test runners and libraries for uh, Karma and Protractor, which allowed us to uh, 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 test our application so well. And then there were other things like generators, and then the whole new concept of uh, mean stack came in, wherein now people started thinking how about JavaScript all throughout, how about JavaScript on the database, how about JavaScript on the node side, and even on the UI side. So, and even hybrid applications became a possibility. And then it was all maintained by Google, so uh, we were uh, you know, quite uh, um, safeguarded uh, around that and there was a good tracking community. Uh, but then suddenly this happened, right? So like Angular on the we decided, okay, now we are going to switch on to 2.0, which uh, the only thing which is common in the name Angular, but there was nothing really uh, common between them. And then they said, that, okay, you know what, uh, even there is not going to be any migration path. And this kind of like was a big jitter to a lot of uh, business because they said, okay, what about all the investment that we have done today? And more so, like all the new projects which are coming in, they are thinking like, you know, what do we do to the new projects? Like, uh, do we still continue with Angular or shall we look for options? So, uh, and also uh, like when Angular 2.0 came, uh, it was actually in a new language called TypeScript from um, the Microsoft Edge, which was a super set of uh, ES6 like JavaScript, but it was not really uh, like there was a little bit of a learning curve to get the concepts right and uh, the good thing about Angular uh, 2.x on the is the CLI like it was uh, that actually kind of at least eased out the way a little bit because now you could uh, develop applications really fast with the help of the CLI uh, and while this uh, change was happening React, uh, React stabbing was actually very nice like it actually came in the time when it was really needed and it made us rethink best practices. Like till now, we were not really thinking of UI side as really a complicated application, and that you know you have to very you have to think really about the performance side. We were only thinking about how to get the job done. But React came up with a very uh, a concept um, of uh, okay. Let's see so the first thing that they came up was uh, it busted the myth of separation of concerns of HTML, JS, and CSS. Like till now, um, we were always thinking that okay, you know what. Uh, uh, HTML is my presentation, JS is my behavior, and CSS is my styling. They are kind of three different concerns for my UI application, and they should always be kind of separated. Uh, and that is how we are going to handle application complexity. That was the notion. But then React said, you know what, if you are using Angular and other uh, um, uh, templating frameworks, then you are anyways inserting JavaScript inside your HTML. So that separation of concern is anyways gone. And if you are anyways thinking of missing those, why not have HTML inside JavaScript? rather than the other way because JavaScript is a much more powerful language and much more expressive. And uh, this is uh, again DOM um, uh, render performance to a center stage. Like till date uh, we had never even thought about you know how much time it takes to render a DOM because it was never really a concern. Like even if a page renders in 10 seconds it was okay for us because we were only thinking of getting the work done. But now that uh, this foundation was laid down to create complex UI applications now we have started feeling these uh, pain points of what if uh, I have a lot of components on my pages, I have a lot of pages to show, uh, I have a lot of uh, a lot more complicated page structures. In that case, if I have to handle a lot more models in my business logic on the UI side, uh, is it possible with the existing framework? And it, we were actually seeing a lot of uh, delays. Like for example, AngularJS 1.x could not handle more than 2000 uh, models. 
and we were actually hitting 2000 in a lot of uh, real world applications. So React uh, uh, was based on the concept of uh, uh, a virtual DOM, uh, wherein the prime uh, concern was to make sure that we take care of the performance of uh, DOM rendering uh, well. Like instead of trying to go and render the DOM in uh, any time in every time, we kind of handle it first on the JavaScript side and render only what is required. And this was actually a big crowd cooler. And then the concept of components. So, uh, not that concept of um, components were introduced by React, it was already there introduced by Ember before uh, and even Angular. Uh, but then React actually came up as more as a UI library and they said that you know what, you first think about your UI uh, page as a uh, hierarchy of components. And then after they said that you don't even think about it as a page, you think of it as a screen in front of you and how do you divide that into components. And then JSS gave you uh, the kind of an abstraction saying that, uh, you know what, uh, uh, instead of thinking of uh, your UI in uh, developing using HTML, think of it as an abstraction which is similar to HTML, but uh, there is an abstraction so that you can create application now not just for web, but also for uh, mobile and uh, VR and other platforms. So these were actually the things uh, that actually drove me also to jump into the React side of it, like the virtual DOM, the performance of the dipping algorithm, the concept of immutability that came with React, that was really nice, like it was really uh, you know, something uh, we were hearing for the first time and that really uh, handled uh, performance of our application really well. Then there was server side rendering which was supported in React and uh, again this was the, uh, uh, this is something that boosted the uh, search engine optimization very well because in most of the uh, single page applications we were facing the problem that the initially the HTML template was coming and data was coming later and my search engine was not really able to pick up the data when it was rendering first time in the browser. So uh, Angular kind of picked up but this was there in React from very early on. And then the concept of a one-way one data flow, this was also kind of very new and quite, quite exciting for me also to jump into. Let's quickly jump into what were really the pain points that we had. So, uh, the challenges that we faced, so all the good things about React that we say are good things today, they were actually uh, challenges for us when we really started because they were all very new for us to uh, get into. For example, uh, React being unopinionated is actually a good thing that you can use your own components to build up your framework. But then when you are new to uh, the system, uh, you really don't want to invest that much of time into that. Right? So uh, that is one of the challenges. Then the other one is uh, understanding of JSX because JSX is a little different uh, from um, uh, HTML or uh, JavaScript. So uh, you have to get a little bit of time of it. And you didn't really have the concept of HTML templates that we are so much used to till now. And then uh, how do I modularize my complex application because till now I was really used to have working with angular modules, how do I break down my code in react, this was again a concept that we have to learn. And then react also uh, you know, kind of uh, supporting the idea of having a CSS in JS which was not really uh, there before. So these were kind of things that actually uh, were a little difficult to pick up. What about state management using store, this was never even heard of before and uh, especially the one way uh, uh, direction of uh, your state, application state. So these are the concepts which are a little difficult to pick up and uh, earlier not um, many UI libraries were there so uh, and again how do I handle responsiveness in my application. These are little uh, uh, bits and pieces which uh, uh, are blockers. Even currently the React, uh, create React uh, apps here like doesn't really have support for SSR. And they have a reason for it, like because they don't want to keep it op uh, opinionated uh, for SSR. But there are a lot of people who want to uh, have SSR support, they do test problems and they have to out of their PLA or use some uh, uh, add-ons. And then uh, if I want to have SSR style components, data and all, this kind of ads keeps adding into my uh, uh, overall payload. So uh, these are basically fundamental things between uh, you know how Angular and React they match one to one. Like uh, React, it doesn't really propagate so much about type safety, but then yeah, if you really want, you have properties, you have flow. Then Angular always was there on uh, type script. Then again, uh, you have uh, RxJS versus Promise on the React side. Then these two CLI uh, compare pretty well. And uh, although we say it's framework versus library, but uh, I think now with the advent of the new CLI, it is not really a case anymore. Like React, React app kind of builds the entire uh, framework for it. 
So, uh, what really changed the game is React Native, because earlier React was saying you learn once and write anywhere. That is how what the concept of React was. But uh, React Native it, uh, came up with the concept of write once and deploy anywhere. This was possible because of another library called React Native Web. Uh, have you ever used that? Uh, this? Okay, so that's a wonderful library that you should definitely try if you are on React Native. That will allow you to uh, deploy your application on Android, iOS, that is anyways by uh, React Native. But uh, even on web uh, and Mac or other uh, bigger uh, uh, displays uh, with the web thing. So uh, let's see. In case, uh, yeah, and then auto upgrade was uh, possible now with React Native. So a lot of good things uh, uh, coming up here. And yeah, so I would like to end my talk saying that you know uh, these kind of changes will keep happening. Today there is React, tomorrow there will be something uh, uh, you know even uh, something else which will be even much more exciting as as and when we grow in the UI area now, there will be a more uh, lot of more demand for handling our application complexity. So keep embracing changes and look out for new things. <coughs>